morning. <clears throat> Just pulling food for the night. Fucking easy night. Easy, easy night. I'll be right back. I'm going to go throw this stuff out in the other room. Wash my hands. There, there we go. Morning, everyone. Hope everybody's having a good morning. Mine's okay so far. I miss fucking Skeeter's live last night. Fucking forgot to fucking even remind anybody about it yesterday. Hopefully, he had a good turnout. What's happening, Dale? Morning, buddy. Fucking, they're still locked this morning. Fucking, Leper and Captain, they've been locked all since yesterday's fucking live. Oh. They're not locked now. No, well, we'll take him out. We'll put him back home. Hi, right, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. I gotta change her. Somebody peed. I I knew they peed too, but they were locked, and I'm not. I, that's about the only time I won't fucking clean them. But she's looking. She's looking large, man. I know what this girl normally looks like, and she's, she's, she's fucking, she's getting large. I'll show you guys her more when I get back, when I get this done. You guys want to watch her over here. You guys can tell me if she's getting into trouble. Yeah, who knows? You know as well as I do, it's still not, it's still not a guarantee. They, they could do the nasty, 
20 fucking times and nothing happened, you know. But, it obviously, the more locks we get, the longer the locks we get, fucking, I think, obviously, the better odds we have. But, there's still no fucking guarantee. <sighs> fucking... A little of this fucking chlorhexidine in my coffee this morning. That'd be good, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little work. Because it was in here a little longer than fucking normal. I don't normally have to fucking scrub in my tubs. I, I got one girl. I swear to God, I don't care if I fucking clean her. I clean her fucking right after she goes. For some reason, hers like sticks. Like fucking concrete. And I always have to take a fucking scrubby to hers. Yeah, it's weird. It's like a fucking, it's almost like a paste. And it just fucking wants to smear. We just went through the racks here this weekend. Fucking pulled all the tubs out. And I fucking cleaned all every fucking level out. I like to fucking clean inside the actual rack itself, pull the tubs out and clean all up in there. Fucking with the moisture that's in there, fucking could be building mold or some, you know, some sort of bacteria could be growing. So it's nice to fucking, I like to go through once a month at least. And I clean it gets the dust out of them and all that but biggest thing I that gives me peace of mind is that there's no fucking mold growing and shit because we definitely don't want them fucking breathing fucking mold and stuff in you know what I mean so I like to go through the racks and I just take the chlorhexidine you know I take the chlorhexidine and just fucking spray each fucking level out and then wipe it out. It's a bitch on these CB70s. My fucking short ass arms, I can't reach. I can reach to the fucking tape in the CB70s and not even to the back side of the tape, just to the front side of the tape, fucking reaching all the way in. So I have to fucking use a fucking stick. And a fucking rag attached to the end of that. Alright. We'll do a little show and tell with Lepra. Get this camera turned around here. Hey girl. Come here. I want to show everybody you. We'll show everybody you while we can, because... Yeah. Yeah, the, actually, the CB70, I'm fucking glad it's fucking disassembled. Because <laughs> I my last fucking rack, CB70 rack I did, Dale, I ended up fucking kind of doing it as I was running each level. You know what I mean? I fucking, just to make it easier so I could fucking reach in. Fucking, because it, it is, it's a fucking pain in the ass, dude. And cleaning them out, you know, cleaning the CB70s out suck. I, I much, honestly, I, I would have much rather have a design where the, where the, it's like lengthwise here and you slide the, the tub out lengthwise. You know what I mean? Fucking, but I, I get it. You know, it holds more heat and humidity this way, but 
it would almost be better, you know, like the Freedom Breeder racks for the for the boas. You know how those those are like lengthwise and they you know they they I think that step setup exists. Oh, it probably does. I I know they have it for the boat the boa constrictor enclosures like the Freedom Breeders. I've looked at those, but they're like fucking twenty two, twenty five hundred dollars. But I like those because they've got the slide drawers, and they have the like little vision window, fucking you know, in the in built into them. And they look like they would hold a, a you know better heat. And I could at least drape blankets down the backside and down the the sides to to help keep some heat in. But I, I do like those Freedom Breed of Boa fucking, Boa Constrictor fucking, I guess some people keep retics in them too. And actually, uh, that uh, Chris Hardwick, I think he had that Burmese Python, Sunny or whatever the fuck her name was. I think he had her in one of those, those racks that I was talking about. It's just so expensive. I could build, I could build me a fucking eight slot, you know, homemade rack for way less than 20 fucking something hundred dollars you know what i mean plus i'm thinking i i kind of want to go back to like for my boas i think i want to have each boa have its own heat mat with its own thermostat right on that mat yeah i think yeah i think you're right i think it, yeah yeah that that might have been what it was he actually that snake died You know, and I got a feeling it, he it was probably overfed. I mean, he took really good care of his animals. I can't say he's that fucking, you know, he he didn't have dirty, nasty tubs, you know, for the most part when he'd open up his tubs and show people his snakes fucking. So I don't think it was that. It was, he probably overfed it not knowing, you know, because I think a lot of fucking people do that i think a lot of people fucking just overfeed their fucking snakes and they don't realize that because everybody just thinks you know most animals if they you know but all animals have a feeding you know a feeding regimen that is pertains to each animal and i think a lot of people just fucking like to think oh if an animal acts like it's hungry oh you should feed it whether you should or not Savannah Monner, my Savannah Monner, a perfect example. She would fucking literally eat all fucking day long, every fucking day if I fed her. But that's not the way she's supposed to be fed. And it's up to me being a fucking responsible keeper to fucking know what fucking her limits should be. You know, and a lot of people don't fucking, don't think about that aspect, you know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's why I said my. That's why I said I. I think most animals, every animal out there, can be overfed. You know, I mean, this girl is really pretty, and I really don't hold her that much. I don't know why. You know, and it. She's she's awesome. She's never. You know, she's never been mean or anything. But she has gotten, she is actually swelling up. I can tell for sure. She's starting to get scale separation. And she's not a first, she's a first time mom. Because I still see my, the scale separation in, in my other females that already, that laid. Their scales never came back. I, and I meant to ask you that, Dale. Did you, do you notice that in your females that basically the scale separation fucking, seems to stay and it, it never they never like shrink back down to i mean they shrink but the scale separation i notice i still the other snakes that i have that gate that actually laid she'll still have scale separations when there's nothing going on you know what i mean but this girl didn't have scale separation and it's starting and you can see it it's evident in her It's not like incredible, like, I can say for sure because they grow and honestly haven't noticed. 
Yeah, see, I, I, I fucking noticed it probably because mine are DACA too. You know what I mean? That that DACA brown and all that. It might make it easier to 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 see it, possibly. But I noticed that my females, even after they gave birth, I was like, wow, they still got like you can still see there was no white in between the scales before they you know were pregnant and and all that. And after they gave birth, I assumed that the fucking, the scales would go back, you know, the the scales would shrink back up together again, and, and you'd lose that white in between the scales, and they haven't. They actually, like, stayed looking like they've got scale separation. So I'm just wondering if that's just, it might be something that, like, female dogs, fucking, it's evident Everybody can tell when a female's had at least one litter. Their their boobs are a little, you know, their boobs hang lower. So I'm wondering if that's so good on inchy clowns. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't have any inchy clowns, but I, you know, fucking feisty, fucking. Let's see if she comes flying out today. Actually, I can show you. I can show you on her. See, like right here. Oh, I get. I'm having a hard time for. I don't know. Can you see it? But she's still. There was no white in between her scales before. They were. They. You know what I mean. You can see it real good right there. At least she didn't come flying out of that fucking tub. Clowns in general, it shows good. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking it's due to the darker color. You know what I mean? The light of the color you're gonna see you're gonna see more whites and lights in a lighter colored snake as opposed to these the clowns are darker so you see it you know what i mean and maybe i just didn't pick up on it real good before because i guarantee you once she go if she gets pregnant or whatever i'm she's gonna have way more scale separation obviously than she's showing now i mean there'll be big gaps but I, I really thought that her that she would have her scales would have tightened back up, but I don't think they did. They they seem like they stayed stretched a little bit to me. Okay, girl, come on. Uh, I know, girl. I'm gonna put you back. What you want to stay? I was gonna put you back. I think you're getting irritated. You just had the wood put to you for 24 hours. Come on, girl. Mm. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, fucking. Hopefully I get some babies. I really need to get rid of fucking three snakes. I really need to get rid of three snakes. Oh. I'll take somebody else out we don't normally take out. Let's see, who could that be? Duchess? Take my fake pride, my fake hat for pride girl out. This girl's still pretty fucking massive, too. You know, my clown 100% fake pot hat for pride. <laughs> I hope not. I gotta get her, I gotta get one of her sheds fucking sent in, though. I would, I mean, obviously, she's, she's fucking definitely heavy enough. She's got a poop, I'd say. She kind of got a fat little ass. Your ass is looking a little fat. 
so we'll put you back before you shit on me. I'm not going to give you a chance to shit on me. But she's looking good, though. Yes, I'm going to test her. I'm not going to test. I'm not going to bother testing the babies. I'll test her. But I'm going to test her and I'm also, I'll send, I'll send, uh, I'll send his, uh, shed in also too. Fucking, I'll test the, the male that I paired it with to make sure he's clown at for pie too. You know, so, but I got, I got fucking other things, man. There's always something, you know, there's always something. There's never enough money to fucking take care of everything. On a good note, boyfriend got fucked a few of his teeth knocked out last night. We, we sent a message to fucking her actual father yesterday and just asked him to go over there and check on her and uh, I guess daughter was right in the midst of fucking kicking him out had all his shit outside and dad walked up over the fucking steps and asked him where kayla was and he said kayla was upstairs and he fucking drove him like six to eight times right in the face and told him to fucking leave <laughs> and dad's an exile her father <coughs> So he showed up, him and one of his bikes, he was actually out on his bike riding riding through town with one of the one of his club buddies, club members, and uh he stopped over, punched him six times in the face and told him to leave. So he's gone now. But we'll see fucking what happens. It does suck spending on testing, fucking, especially for me where I really don't care. You know, I don't, I don't even know. I might not even fucking, I might not even pair her or anything. Even if she is half a pie. You know, I don't know. The way fucking everything's going, it's scary. You go on fucking Marketplace on Facebook and there is so much fucking equipment. And we're not talking tanks. I mean, there's always tanks on there. There are fucking boa racks. There are the, there's the Freedom Breeder boa rack on there right now. There's the Vision boa rack fucking on there right now. There's fucking a ton of fucking racks. You know, but they everybody wants fucking close to fucking what you can buy them brand new. And I'm just like, you know, and then in the picture, they look like they've been sitting in somebody's garage, you know, all dusty and dirty and fucking makes you even wonder if you even would want to put any animals in it. And they want 300 bucks for it. And I'm going, what the fuck? Really? You know, they're asking $300 for a VE6, you know, which is absurd. I'm pretty sure I can buy a VE6 for under 300 bucks still right now. Tubs. With tubs. I might be wrong, but but even so, am I going to buy some U shit for 300 or go buy fucking a VE6 fucking brand new for 20 $30 more? I mean, that's why these guys are all going to hang on to this shit too. Oh, it is. It's crazy because everybody... But it's it's everything on there. It doesn't matter what you search. If you're searching for fucking lawnmowers, you're going to see people out there that are giving their shit away, which, red flag, and not, like, free, but, I mean, price-wise, giving it away. And then you got other people that are fucking asking, like, $200 less than a brand new one, that's, and their rig's three years old. You know, motorcycles are the same way. You go look at fucking Harleys now. You're going to have those guys that are... Pretty much, you know, giving them away because they realize that the fucking market's like that. And regardless what you think something's worth right now, people don't have that kind of money. So you got a fucking blowball and everybody. And then you got the monkeys on the other end of it. They got a 20-year-old fucking bike. 
And because they fucking put all the chrome pots and accessories on it, they think it's still worth $20,000. It's like, guy, it's your bike's worth more if you put all the fucking shit, original shit back on it and take your chrome off it and, and pot that out. They, it, chrome and all the upgrades you do to your fucking motorcycle is worth pennies. Pennies on the dollar when it comes to selling it. So, but it's just absurd to see, think fucking people actually asking fucking what they are for shit. When pe if you've got a brain and you know what stuff normally goes for brand new, or take the time and look it up. You know, but there is a ton of a fucking equipment and everybody. I get messages at least twice a fucking week from somebody on fucking Instagram sending me their whole fucking list of snakes that they got for sale because they're getting out of the fucking business and, you know, and then you got the other guys that are crying, fucking, oh, I lost my ass trying to fucking sell snakes and... It's like, guy, I saw plenty of videos even fucking five years ago. People weren't saying that, oh, you're just going to make a bunch of fucking money. You know? I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, I would like to sell three more fucking babies. but And I'm still producing some babies. But I'm not going to go hog fucking wild. I'm going to try to keep it to where fucking I can maintain everything without my animals suffering for fucking for, for any decisions that I make you know what I mean I want to make sure that I can I'm going to continue to take care of them just like I started five years ago and I'm just going to keep going on from there fucking but I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize fucking me being able to take care of my animals uh, all my decisions fucking I always fucking my animals are my first thought my wife can pretty much deal with anything. You know. How you doing, Skeeta? I missed you fucking... I missed you fucking live last night. And I forgot all about to tell anybody about you live. Sorry about that. Fucking... I don't even remember what was going on fucking that was so great yesterday. Oh, let's see. We'll take Lucky out. Hi, Bucky. Did you see Intrepid Exotics has got a new retick this morning? I think it's one of them Golden Childs. Fucking. Sounds like people just call him up. I mean, this was like Jeremy something from some some reptile breeder, I would say, or retick breeder. And he called him up and said he's got a snake fucking farm. And sounds like he just went over and picked it up. Uh, fucking, and there's a lot of that going on, too. Fucking, I get messages still. Fucking, hey, fucking, got this snake. Fucking, you know, pay shipping. I'll send it to you. You know. And they're not like fucking, you know, little time people. It's fucking people that, that are, uh, you know, decent sized breeders. Been doing it way longer than I have. Saying that, they, you know, hey, we'll send you a snake. Fucking, oh, I'm good. Hey, you didn't leave your fucking generator up there, did you? I saw where the fucking kids fucking destroyed your chair and and fucking, jeez, I'm afraid, dude, you're gonna, if them fucking kids are big enough, they're gonna haul your fucking generator off the mountain. It's too bad you couldn't find a... Yeah, Skeeter goes live tonight at 7. There's four people in here right now. So, you guys like it better when the fucking when it's dark? You guys like it better when it's darker? Do the colors come out better? I think colors might come out better on certain snakes. And then perfectly certain snakes, fucking, they don't come out good at all. She's just getting washed out. He's getting washed out. It's not a she. It's a he. What's up, Siri? You busy fucker. Or actually, I think it was... Uh, 
something dragon. I can't remember. The fuck was the name of that person yesterday? Something dragon. I think they said they were the ones that were fucking super ass busy. How are you this morning, Siri? Yes, check out Skeeter's Live tonight at 7. Blacklight. Yeah, he's the one that was too scared to mate. I threw him in with that female and he go he went and fucking sat in her water bowl and wouldn't come out. And he was, you know, Christ, you see, he's not very small. He's not a fucking small snake. I don't know why. But he's scared of her. I haven't paired him since I probably won't now that I've got an albino pied female. There's no reason for me to go and, you know, throw this hat for pied to a 100% hat for albino and do that. For lightning, I bet the colors would glow. That'd be awesome to see. Oh, yes. Yes. Fucking the black light. Yes. I know. I probably ought to. That, that's that's actually probably a good idea. I got enough snakes with a lot of white in them that it would probably look really cool. You know what I mean? Especially the white ones. And we'd be able to see fucking the padding in, in, uh, in lightning. You know? My, my fucking uh, Super Mojave banana. Be able to fucking see the banana padding in him. I should do that, Skeeter. That's a good idea. I'll go fucking on when I get off today. I'll go online and see what I can get for a blue light. Or black light, rather. And uh, try to get something that I can fucking mount on the ceiling. You know? Yeah, I mean, this one would fucking show up really good. I, any, the albino pie that I have, fucking, you know. And I, the Enchi might even show that, you know, who knows what their fucking patterns would actually come out like. Timu. <laughs> yeah, I know, Ski, you're right. Timu is cheap. But I also bought a fucking couple things on Timu and fucking, that's just what it ended up being, China junk. Again, no, probably I'll I'll probably stick to probably Amazon or something like that. Cause when I want to get something decent, I I tend to fucking go through eBay or Amazon. Timu was one of them things that if I really don't care, you know what I mean, <laughs> whether it works that long or not. Cause that's the thing. I had that nice fucking clock that was cool. It had the water that looked like it was going in reverse. Instead of coming down from the top, it looked like it was going up from the bottom. Well, that fucking thing lasted three days. And then it went to shit. And the first thing that happened was the fucking... It, I thought it was a, a... It was supposed to be a humidifier. You know? And fucking... Christ, the thing only held like two cups of water. Fucking... And it says it ran... All, it ran for 48 hours on two cups of water. But I didn't know it because it didn't tell you that until we got it home. And then we, because it said, oh, it runs for 48 hours, you know, once full. It didn't say how much water it took. But I was like, oh, 48 hours, that's pretty fucking good. At least as long as it fucking runs 24, I don't care. I'll fill it up every day. Fuck it. We get it home. The fucking base of it's this big around. It fucking, the, the water hold is this big around. The whole fucking thing's this big. Fucking, you know, about this tall, about that tall, fucking, or about this big around, that tall. Fucking, it was fancy and all that, but the dehumidifier, the humidifier pot, fucking, within eight hours stopped working. And then the, the only thing that fucking still works on it right now is the clock. And, <laughs> and I can't stand to look at that fucking thing just for the clock. So I tossed it, but I was, I was really disappointed. Paid like 30 fucking dollars for it. I know 30 bucks isn't a whole lot, but 
You look what a regular dehumidifier cost, uh, humidifier costs. They're not that fucking expensive. You know, I could have got a cheaper one that did nothing but just fucking humidify the fucking air for fucking less money than I paid for that fucking piece of shit. Timu! Go, Timu! <laughs> okay. Everybody loves Timu! Here's little Phoenix. Little Phoenix. Oh, there we go. Look at how nice, look how beautiful she is. She fucking is gorgeous, man. She is a pretty baby. And she was supposed to stay here, too. Phoenix wasn't going to go anywhere. Now I don't even know if Phoenix is going anywhere. So... But I guess we will see. Fucking good shipping weather, though. Got all kinds of it coming up. For me. You want her? You want her, Siri? I'll send I'll ship her right to you. She's a sweetheart. She got a skull on her head. See if I can show it. Oh, come on. She likes to just keep going up at stuff. She's she's so friendly. Look, put anything over her head, watch. She she fucking she goes right up to it. <laughs> My wife would kill me. She wouldn't. She wouldn't if she if you got her watching these videos to see how sweet this girl is. And see how sweet these snakes are. So awesome. So obviously you don't have any snakes. So this is exactly. You are exactly why I have this channel. And that's why I do these videos. Because I want people to see that these guys are so fucking cool. And so chill dude. They are one of the easiest best fucking pets. They really are. And I was scared to death of them up to five years ago. You know, this is coming from somebody that was scared to death. Scared to death of snakes. And now I think they're the fucking best, one of the best pets out there. And they are one of the easiest ones to take care of. You know, even when she's this size. Uh, oh, you do have a ball? Oh, so you, oh, uh, she just doesn't want you getting any more. I got you. That, that's understandable. My my wife said that when I was at five snakes, and I've got thirty five now, <laughs> and I still have my wife too. <laughs> We've been together uh, twenty six years. My wife and I. We've only been married fucking six though. I told her if we could survive fucking raising the three kids together and get them out of high school, fucking after that we'd get married. So we would have been together 19 years before we even got married. I made her wait a long ass time. Ohio trip was great, but construction areas suck. I had to wait on the turnpike for it. Oh, yeah. I don't care. You go south from us. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. 27 years for Skeeta. That's awesome. Yeah, it's you don't hear of it very much anymore. Most everybody gets about fucking 10, 15 years in and that's about it. We never split up, never fucking, never, never, we've never broken up the whole fucking, in that whole time, there was never no off and on, we've been together fucking every day for 20 fucking six years, no split ups, fucking nobody stormed out, no, 
nobody stayed somewhere else. We always stayed in the fucking same house we lived in. You know what I mean? A lot of people like to get in fights and then run off and then go stay somewhere else for however long and then get back together. We never had none of that. None of that. We've been a solid together for 27, 26 years. Raised fucking three kids together. All out of the house. All got their own families now. Like they've been moved out of the house, Christ fucking fifteen years. We got old older kids. We got a thirty-four year old and two twenty-seven year olds. And I got five grandkids. And our oldest grandkids are twelve and eleven. And then our youngest is five or six. I think she's six this year. Awesome. I have a son that still hasn't had any kids yet. So I got more coming. I'm pretty sure. No, I don't know. Oh, my wife told me the other night she thinks I'm batshit crazy. And she meant it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what was I? I was in my 30s. Yeah, I was in my 30s. That's awesome, Skeeter. Congratulations, dude. I was 22 when I had my son. My wife was 14 when she had her first kid. And they're not mine. She had two girls before, and I had my son. But uh, our young, my, my youngest son is... Six months older than her daughter. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'm a batshit crazy guy. And I was like, really? You don't really think that, do you? I said, fucking, why the fuck would you be with me if you fucking honestly feel like fucking... And she... Because I get mad over little shit. You know? If I bend over to go pick something up and I, and I fucking... Stand back up and I don't have it in my hand. It just fucking triggers me. I I mean, incredible. I fucking, if I stub my fucking toe or something like that, it's, you'd swear somebody fucking shot at me. I get so mad. I get, I get so triggered over little shit. Other than fucking, that's why I love animals. Animals fucking bring me back down to earth. Fuck it, you know what I mean? Fucking, but I do. I go over off the stupidest shit. And people will tell you I go off so bad, even though they know it's not directed towards them, they all fucking hate it. It all makes them feel really uncomfortable. Like I'm just going to fucking snap on them. But I'm not fucking like that. I direct my anger to whatever the fuck it is. And most of the time it's at myself. I don't punch myself in the face, but. I fucking, my face will get all fucking beat red and fucking, I'll call myself every fucking name in the book and, you know, I'm my worst fucking critic and I'm really hot on myself. <laughs> we don't have anybody else fucking claiming bullshit or claim, claiming your bullshit. I, I claim my own. <laughs> Scream and holler at myself. Get so fucking mad. I've learned real quick though. Doesn't it absolutely? It might feel good for a minute to smash a TV, <laughs> you know, fucking run right through a fucking, you know, the fucking door, the front door. I I've gone and smashed so many fucking front doors. 
I mean, literally, because the fucking door handle fuck go to open the door and the fucking door, you know, the door handle be a little hanky, and that'd be just enough to piss me off, and I fucking shoulder right through the fucking front door. But cost too much now, you know. And the older I got, I realized fucking that just shit. All that ends up doing is costing me fucking money. Because I was really bad when I was younger. I just fucking destroy shit. Even stuff that I fucking really loved because it was like, that's the how I knew. Well, how, how am I going to hurt myself? I'm going to fucking destroy something that I really like. Just because, you know, cut my fucking head off to spite my face, you know. But then it got too fucking expensive to keep doing that. What time it is? I don't know what time it is. Fucking, uh, it's got to be 11 o'clock. No, a little after 11. Uh, 11.46. Oh, you're talking to Skeeter. Yeah, Skeeter's going on at 7 tonight. Oh, you can see the orange highlights like this. See how she got heavy fucking orange highlights on her if yellows. See the pattern? You can fucking see the pattern. In the middle of it. Dale probably can't see it because he's on his phone. But she's got another pattern inside of her fucking yellow there. And I don't know what it is. It might not be anything. It might be just a fucking marking. Do you see her fucking eyes, though? She's got fucking beautiful, like, tangerine. that Like, the inside of a grapefruit. Eyes. She's got such beautiful eyes. This is Tiana. Not to be made mistaken from a Tatiana. 1014 here in Oklahoma. Oh, I didn't even know where you was actually from, Siri. I don't think I ever asked you that. Which is weird, because I normally ask everybody here at least two or three times. Because <laughs> I can't remember. But did you see her pattern, Dale? Did you see her pattern? Hopefully he's still going to come to the house. Hopefully Dale still comes to the house because I got I got some snakes I fucking like to get his opinion on. Like this girl in the normal. Well, I've just never seen normally you have your albino pides don't normally have fucking a padding inside the padding. It you know, at least what I what I've seen. But it could be just that, you know, sometimes you can't fucking see everything in a fucking photo, too. And sometimes you can't see everything in a video. You know what I'm saying? So, but from what I've seen, pictures and videos, I haven't actually seen, like, a fucking pattern inside the yellow on the albino pies. Unless it was, like, some other morph of some sort. And even if he doesn't know, I still like to get his opinion. You know, I don't expect fucking Dale to fucking know everything, but I still like fucking his opinion. And she, to me, she's unique. And I've got a male that's a normal, but I don't think. Sweet. You took 11 more snakes in. Holy fuck. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome that you're doing that. I couldn't. I couldn't right now. Fuck. It's kind of irritating me that I got to fucking set up a couple fucking temporary tubs, honestly. You know, because I want to get Brandy moved into here. Brandy's got fucking, she's got, there's no issues. And like I said, she's never been around any other snakes. They didn't have any other fucking, an she was the only animal they had. You know, not that if they had cats and dogs would matter, but they had no reptiles other than her. And Marvin had no other animals other than cats that he's been around. So 
I know that Marvin's fine and I know that Brandy's fine. But now I got to move somebody out of fuck. I got to move Callie out. Because this guy, this guy don't need to be in a CB70 tub. This guy don't need to be in a CB70 tub. He, he could easily live the rest of his life out, no problem, in a 32, a 32 quart, you know. So, he's well, actually just a wild William right now. Not that I necessarily go by weight. I go by length, too. Mo Honestly, when it comes to the males, oh, I fucking ripped that shit. When it comes to the males, I more so go by how long they are. But I would say, I'm going to guess on him, uh, 14, 1,400 grams, maybe. Maybe. And he is my oldest snake. Fucking uh, that of the ones that I bought. This was my very first snake I bought. A male uh, coral glow, pastel coral glow. Fucking, and uh, I gotta get a high. Well, we'll use this tub. This tub works pretty good. Thirteen seventeen. Well, thirteen sixteen, thirteen seventeen. Oh, and he's such a good boy. He was the only reason I got all the other snakes that I got because when I got this guy, he was super chill, and he still is. He did strike up at me once because I set him down on the coffee table in his tub, and. Uh, when I took his lid off, I was standing up over him, and I scared him, so he kind of struck up at me, which kind of put me off at first, you know, and then I was like, well, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I fucking, obviously, I probably just scared him, and I did. I scared the shit out of him, and he fucking was like, hey, I'm going to bite you, you know, but. Oh, no shit. You're in a lot of pain, Casey. You laid up, too. They tell you that, that all that stuff is normal. No. I still... I, I only trust the doctors so much. Because the doctors aren't going to... Don't know our... Our body... And how our body feels more than we do. And I tell people all the time, now that I'm older, I tell people all the time, hey, if you fucking, if, if you don't trust what he's telling you, because we're, nobody knows us better than we do. And if you fucking know that something don't feel right, don't trust that, trust that, trust fuck that, you know, trust that something probably ain't right. I don't fucking, I don't just trust fucking doctors anymore. I, I trust my fucking self more than I do doctors, you know. Doctor, doctor, you gonna tell me that something's normal if I know that it doesn't? It's not normal. <laughs> just saying, I just say, and I don't, don't ever not trust your gut, you know. I'd rather fucking be wrong then then be like oh i was fucking I, I i was right and i should have fucking done something about it and you did and you don't you know what i mean but anyway i want to i want to put this guy into a fucking into brandy's tub that she's in out in the kitchen i'm gonna throw that up on top of the rack here and uh, throw him in it, because that's plenty big enough for this fucking guy. He don't need anything bigger than that. He's not going to get real big. I don't think he'll get any longer, honestly. I don't know. I might be wrong.
I, I think, I think, and I'll ask Dale to verify it, because I, 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 this is, I think, I don't know for sure, but they say they're adults at fucking, like, what, three, three to five years old? Now, them being an adult, does that just mean they're internals for reproduction are adults? Or basically they say and they grow three to five years and then after that they just kind of fucking gain weight and all that. Do, do they continue to grow for fucking 25, 30 years? Or, or do they like, like plateau out at a certain age and then basically it's just adding weight or maintaining at at a, at a certain point. Do you know what I'm saying? I fucking hate explaining anything because I'm fucking the worst. I can't even explain to myself. I have seen so many doctors who came in and asked me what is and that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, that would fucking suck, dude. Yeah, holy fuck, dude. Yeah, that wouldn't fucking give me fuck very good, very peace, much peace of mind either. That when they go, they don't even know what that is. <laughs> when a doc tells you they don't know what it's called. So obviously, you had to go to a special specialist. So, in other words, your doctors are like five times more expensive than anybody else's normal doctor because you got to have a special, special doctor. Siri, did you take off? Maybe, oh, Dale might not be in here. Dale might have had to go. Um... This is Magnum. I don't show him a whole lot. He's a uh, clown. Supposed to be 100% het for pie, but they did not prove out the clutch. The one fucking clutch that I did with him and my other supposable clown 100% het for fucking pied female. So, only got four babies, so... That might have something to do with it, but. Ah, no problem, dude. Fucking. Like I told you, you don't have to thank me. You don't have to thank me for anything, because that's, that's, you know, I fucking absolutely have no problem helping other people out if I can. You know, honestly, fucking. Uh, and I think fucking, you know. We could all use a little help sometimes, and fucking that was nothing. You know, that that really wasn't anything. That was easier than hell. That was just fucking going, hey, you know. We didn't call, I, I didn't have to work at it. You know, we had the people in here to, to get you fucking, you know, to the subs that you needed. And that was no problem, dude. Absolutely. Jesus, so you got a lot to take care of when you took fucking 11 snakes in and now you got to fucking, be, now you're all laid up on surgery. <laughs> Again. I, no, we did the same for him that we did for you, Skeeter. We got you a bunch, you know, we tried to get you as many subs. I'm sorry, I fucking, I don't think you came in yesterday. And that's probably, if you wasn't here yesterday or didn't fucking pop in for very long, I think that's why I fucking completely forgot about it. Because I went into it when I fucking was making, uh, scheduling the live. I go, oh, I got to make sure tonight's Tuesday night. Fucking make sure you fucking let everybody know fucking Skeet is fucking live at 7 o'clock. And 
It fucking completely fucking, what's up, Patrick? It completely slipped my mind, dude. Mandy, what's going on this morning? I'll give you a wave. Absolutely, Mandy. We aim to please here. Yeah, luckily I married an amazing woman who has helped me through it. Are you even able to get up? Oh, it's not a problem, Mandy. I'm glad you stopped by. Like, uh, I hope you're having a good morning so far. And thank you, Patrick, for stopping by. Fucking hanging out with us little people. Fucking, if you guys aren't subbed to fucking Patrick a little bit of everything, you guys should go check out his fucking channel. You know? Fucking, Patrick is fucking a super cool fucking guy. So, share some love. Make sure everybody goes over and fucking subs up Patrick a little bit of everything. How you doing this morning, Patrick? Uh, my little channel. I appreciate that, Bob. I really do. Uh, I, I hope fucking life's treating you well. Even though I think we're all fucking struggling fucking in our own little fucking way right now. Yes, this is... <laughs> uh, this is my meal. Oh, you were... Hey, I'm, hey, what the hell you do for work, dude? If you don't mind me asking, I'm not trying to be nosy. I just kind of like to know what everybody else is kind of into. And I know what you do for hobbies, but I never did ask you what what you do for work. If you don't mind me asking, you don't have to tell us if you don't want to. Patrick does OnlyFans. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Fucking Dale's always shitting on me here, always fucking saying, hey, fucking make sure you fucking join my fucking OnlyFans. I got no OnlyFans, so I was just sharing the fucking wealth with you, Patrick. Go join Patrick's OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, but no, this is a clown supposed to be 100% half for pie, but I, he didn't prove out, and my female was supposed to be the same thing. It's Patrick, little bit of everything. That is his. Uh, that's his channel. You should be able to just click on, click right on his icon in the chat, and it should bring you there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did, but it didn't escape. I forgot to close his tub up. Fucking one night in the next morning when I woke up because the first thing I do is I go through my tubs first thing in the morning last thing before I go to bed you know what I mean so they were and they were in the living room at the time because I had all these racks in the living room for fucking four years and then finally I decided you know fucking my wife my wife had complained a little bit not really too bad you know about it fucking closed our living room right up. And our living room got really warm in the summertime. So I, I finally decided, you know, I'd fucking put them in this back room. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so anyway. So when they were out in the living room, I had left. Because I do that a lot. Like when I'm going through in the morning or in, in, the, in the night. He tries a sanitation truck and he, and he has an OnlyFans page. <laughs> Fat time. That is too funny. Uh, your truck say on the side of it, we suck. <laughs> uh, oh my God, buddy. That's fucking funny. But yeah, so anyway, I woke up that morning and I noticed that I left Callie's fucking tub open. Because first thing in the morning, when I go through, if any of the snakes are right there, like, wanting to come out, I let them, I leave the tub open and then I go on to the next one and clean. 
you know, and keep or or just checking on everybody. And I'll leave those snakes out so they could just, you know, check out and see what's going on. You know what I mean? So that's what I did with Callie that night. Well, I fucking forgot to fucking close him up. Next morning I got up, he wasn't in his fucking tub. And we, I went through the whole house, picked the couch up, made sure he weren't up inside the couch somewhere and all that. What Where he ended up being is un, I had this uh, steel framed uh, shelving system and I had, because our floors, some fucking, our floors are fucking unlevel, so I had a fucking uh, piece of slat wood in the back that kept it up level. Well, it left a little gap in the very back underneath that fucking bottom shelf on that shelving system and that's where we found him and he was fucking cold because it was fucking winter time too and so the very outside edges of the wall where the floor and the wall meet it is fucking cold in here i live in a trailer so to give you a fucking so it's fucking cold on the floor and uh but he was right there picked him up and I fucking warmed him up slowly because I didn't want to pick him up from that cold, cold and throw him right in a warm tub. So I kept him out a little bit and, and got him, you know, his body temperature, you know, raised some. And then I threw him back in his tub. And and I haven't, that's the only time that I've ever had a snake get away, get out. And it was my own doing. But I have heard of that before. I had a friend, uh, a friend of a friend contact me because she her snake got out and she wanted to know the best way to find it and from what i hear the best thing to do is to stick a hide over a fucking heat mat on a corner or in the middle of the of a room that that the, the snake got out in and you put a fucking hide over a fucking heat mat and normally overnight the next morning they pick the hide up in the snakes there because it's gone for that warm spot. And a lot of people, that's how they get them. Some people will put food, but it's just kind of nasty putting fucking a rodent on that fucking hot mat under a hide. But I can see where that would, you know, possibly entice them to, to go to that area. It's just kind of nasty to me to fucking put a rodent on a, you know, on a heat mat but if your room's warm enough you could just throw a fucking you know something on the floor put a put a fucking uh hide over it and stick food under it if you don't have to have a heat mat you know but it just seems kind of gross i don't want to tell anybody oh fucking throw a rodent on a heat mat under a fucking hide overnight you know what i mean it's gonna be nasty and smell gross come on and you ain't gonna wanna you ain't gonna wanna fucking you're not going to want to fucking lift that hide up in the morning. If that fucking rodent's still there. 90 degrees doesn't seem very hot, but it's warm enough to fucking make that fucking rat fucking really start fucking rotting fast. Mmm. I hope I answered that question, Mandy, if you're still here. It's saying we only got four people in here now, so we lost somebody. I probably went into too much detail. Mandy didn't have that much time to hang out and fucking hear that whole story. I got to learn to fucking... I don't know how to edit my my talking to shorter sentences. I always fucking have to explain my fucking stories in grave detail, and I don't know why. Thank you, Casey. Casey's still here. Casey, dude, I hope to fuck you start feeling better, dude. But when did you have surgery? How long has it been now? You do have that you're on the younger scale of of age wise as opposed to if if I had to go through 
La oh, this last Monday, yeah. It'd probably be at least a week, probably, before you really start feeling better. Because it normally, like, three days after fucking, it always seems to be the worst, I think. Personally, I always felt like three, three days after fucking anything, like my back surgery, fucking, it was like three to four days before it really started fucking hurting me again. Granted, I didn't fucking take anything. I don't like taking nothing. I just smoked a lot of pot. I told them that, too, because they fucking told me before, because they'd call you when you're having, you know, surgery. They call you up, tell you, you know, the night before, you know, when you're not supposed to eat nothing and all that, and not do any drugs and this and that, and, and, and they, because they didn't say necessary drugs, they said no, no drugs and no marijuana, and I told the fucking girl, I said, good luck getting me there fucking if I can't fucking get high before I show up in the morning. I said, I'm smoking a fucking, I'm smoking pot before I come. I said, probably on the fucking way there. I said, I might be pulling into the fucking parking lot, actually fucking finishing up, to tell you the truth. And the woman goes, oh, all I can do is tell you, we don't recommend it because we don't know how that could affect your fucking, you know, your anesthesia. And I'm just like, oh, so I'm not going to dream on anesthesia. Because most of us that smoke a lot of pot, I don't have a lot of dreams. I don't dream much. And and they say that, that if you smoke a lot of fucking pot, that tends to be one of the side effects to it is we don't have, I don't have a lot of dreams. I really don't. I don't dream much at all. And I used to before I started smoking pot, but that was fucking 40 years ago. Because I started smoking pot. My Uncle Jeff got me into it. I probably was smoking pot since I was eight. Because they all thought it was a big joke. You know? <laughs> like, uh, get my nephew high and we'll fucking laugh at him. Because he was only like fucking, I don't know, six years older than me. So it's not like, you know, he was fucking 20 fucking years old and I was eight. He wasn't that much older than me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not like, oh, this old adult fucking... But no, he and his fucking buddies would get me high and then fucking laugh their ass off at fucking, you know, me being all fucking... <laughs> uh, it's, it's not... And it's funny because it was me. I can laugh about it. It was me, okay? I don't think it's funny. I never did it with my fucking kids, I can tell you that. You know, and we never partied around them. My kids never saw anybody, never saw me fucking drink. My kids can never can say they've never seen me drunk and when they were kids. Fucking they have sent. But I still don't get, like, fucking stupid drunk falling down. And, you know, I'm happy-go-lucky when I'm around the right people. If I'm around the wrong people, fucking I'm an instant asshole just add alcohol fucking if the wrong people are around but i don't i don't really drink though you know but we like to eat mushrooms <laughs> i like to eat mushrooms like my wife and i got married on mushrooms literally we were fucking getting married fucked up on mushrooms when we had a uh, fucking uh Cause we didn't end up, we got married and we took off on my bike. Fuck him. We did a little fucking little quiet thing in the park. Wife and I took off on my Holly and we took off to New Hampshire and we stayed in New Hampshire for like four days. Fucking just the two of us. And then when we came back the following weekend, we had whatever you call it, reception or whatever here at the house and fucking had like 40, 50 fucking people show up. Me and my wife were eating mushrooms that day too. All fucked up with everybody fucking here. Fucking, it was pretty cool. Fucking, we had a good time. No, well, couldn't help but fucking smile ear to ear. You know? <laughs> fucking, my wife got shut off at the bar down in fucking, in New Hampshire. And it's because the fucking woman didn't like it because fucking the woman would go all the way around the bar and ask people if they wanted something, okay? And she kept doing that. She didn't just go all the way up to somebody and, and help them. She'd make her way around the whole time while fucking the woman was over at the other end of the bar helping people out and my wife starts waving to her. <laughs> Trying to get her attention because my wife wanted another drink. 
well, that fucking woman didn't like the fact that my fucking wife was waving to her to fucking bring her a drink. Because she came over with an attitude. And she looked at my wife and she goes, you can have one more and then you're shut off. And I was just like, what the fuck? My wife's only had two? And they're going to shut her off at three? I've been ordering doubles. I've been ordering Captain and Coke doubles. I was on like my fourth fucking drink. And that woman... Fucking after she gave my wife her last drink, looked at me and goes, can I get you anything, hun? And she kept calling me hun and she kept fucking smiling at me. <laughs> and it was really pissing my wife off because fucking she kept serving me. I got like, I got served nine Captain and Coke doubles. Fucking and my wife got shut off at three drinks. And we told the girl, we're just staying at the hotel across. We walked here from my hotel. We fucking staying right there. We're not driving. Fucking, you know, my wife obviously isn't drunk by far. I was. I was fucking hammered when I walked out of there. I mean, fucking hammered. And my wife was like so pissed. And I was kind of pissed too. But I was like, I know why she did it. Did you see her fucking face when you started waving to her fucking because you were trying to get her attention? I said, she didn't fucking like that a bit. And she fucking shut my wife off for it. But she sat right there. I got nine fucking Captain Coke doubles. <laughs> and she shut my wife off after three margaritas. I was just like, what the fuck? Uh, but it was funny. I thought it was fucking hilarious. My wife was pissed off at her for the rest of the night. But my wife isn't like, she didn't let it ruin her night. It just the whole time we were there, she just kept bitching about that broad. And then we, when we left a, a couple times throughout the night, she'd go, that fucking cunt. <laughs> that fucking cunt did fucking shut me off. And then sat right there and fucking fed you nine doubles. <laughs> Uh, he kept calling me hun and smiling and come right over. Even if fucking she come over and go, oh, can I get you another drink? Fucking. That was a good night. That was fucking funny. I got to see my wife fucking mad in hell and it wasn't created by me. My wife, I no, I, I guess I could. I could have, I should have asked her fucking for like a strawberry fucking margarita and just slid it over to my wife. You know, but I'm telling you, that's all it was though. It's because my wife raised her fucking hand and was like, hey, <laughs> hey. And that fucking bartender, when she turned and looked at my wife, I knew instantly fucking she was not fucking happy. My wife was sitting there waving to her, trying to get her to fucking bring her a drink. And my wife wasn't like being rude. That's the way it is at bars around here. I'm telling you right now. They don't just normally come around. They sit there and they watch everybody. And they'll come over. As soon as they see somebody taking their last sip, they come right over and go, Hey, do you want another one? It's not like that at this bar. That girl went would stop at the beginning of the bar and she'd work her way all the way around. And then she'd pause for a little bit, and then she'd go all the way back around. She didn't go zo zooming in when somebody was done drinking, you know. And to be fair, like I said, that's the way it is around here. You you, you raise your hand, you know, and fucking, <laughs> you know, I like another drink. You know, fucking, it's, and nobody else around here, it's, it's not a big deal here. But obviously they got stricter rules fucking down there in New Hampshire. But I did, I thought it was fucking hilarious because we went out of there, my fucking wife, she fed you nine fucking drinks, doubles at that. Fucking, and she shut me off at three margaritas. I said, you wouldn't have got shut off if you hadn't fucking waved to her after that second one. But. We didn't do no mushrooms while we were in New Hampshire, though. We didn't really do a whole lot. We just rode. We hopped on the bike and rode around New Hampshire. And that was about it. I mean, it was still good. We got to do what I wanted to do. And luckily, my wife likes doing fucking pretty much everything that I like to do. And the shit we don't like doing together, we don't do together. I don't do groceries. You know, I don't do grocery shopping. I'll do the fucking grocery pickup with her. 
But I won't go fuck. I don't go. I don't want to fucking be around fucking people. You know, I really don't. I go into stores because I need something and I go right in there and get it. I'm not a fucking look around, going to see all the latest, newest fucking shit. You know what I mean? I'm not like that. I'm in and fucking gone. You know, and even people I see in the store, if they go, hey, Brent. Fucking, I don't even turn around. I <laughs> just fucking put my hand out and just keep walking. Then it might not even be me they're talking to. So that's why I don't even bother stopping. <laughs> I fucking put a hand out and just keep going. I'm like that. I fucking people all the time when they see me in the summertime out on my bike. I wave to you. I can't believe you look and don't wave back. Go, I don't fucking look to see who the fuck's out there. You know, I'm not looking to go, oh, who do I know? Who do I see that I know? I I don't do. No, people are just disappointing, Patrick. You know what I mean? There ain't nothing there ain't nothing out there that will disappoint you more you more than society. <laughs> than humans. Humans fucking uh, uh like the the worst fucking at just fucking being disappointing, hurting your feelings, you know. Fuck yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm 51 years old. I don't have to act all big and tough anymore. Fucking people fucking plain hurt will uh fucking hurtful. You know? And I just it, I would love to meet some of you guys. That's the sucky part, and I always tell everybody. The cool people always live so far away that it's not even really feasible for me to go and meet anybody. You know, I'm uh, Siri in Oklahoma. Fucking, I don't remember where you're from, Patrick. Fucking, but I'm sure you're not fucking Pennsylvania. Even Skeeter in Pennsylvania. Fucking Skeeter's far enough away that I'm not driving to Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania's really not that far away from here. But, I don't normally travel farther than New Hampshire, and it's normally on my bike. You know, any more than I expect somebody to fucking, you know, drive all the way up here. Oh, I, I wave to, like, other bikes. You know what I mean? I don't mean that I don't wave to other bikers, but I got people that fucking see me when they're in their car and shit, and it's like, I'm not out to see who I see, and it's not me being, you know, antisocial or me being, you know, like me fucking giving you the silent finger because I didn't wave. It's just, that's not what I'm fucking out there for. I'm out there to enjoy myself. I've been cooped up all fucking went along. The last thing I care about is who the, who the fuck is waving to me. You know what I mean? And most of the time, fucking, I just assume people are fucking waving like this anyway. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I know. Mystic, you, and I'm sure Patrick is fucking out there, too. No, I don't mean, uh, like, out there in the in the brain, Patrick. I mean, I'm sure you fucking probably, I mean, I think Evie and Skeeter are the closest ones to me. Evie's in New York, and Pat, and I'm not Patrick, fucking Skeeter's in Pennsylvania, we do have a couple other guys that come in here to talk to Dale that are Dale's buddies that are down this way. One guy's in Orono. I think Lucid Dreams is in Orono. And uh, then you've got Bold Coast Exotics. And he's somewhere down here this way too, fucking. So, but they're not, you know, they come here to hang out with Dale and talk to Dale. So, and I'm not saying that they're not cool people, but. I didn't, they didn't, I didn't meet them the same way I met the rest of you guys. You know what I mean? Fucking, you guys were watching my videos and all that. These guys fucking, I never watched a fucking video of mine. You're eight hours from New York and you're south fucking New York, I take it to. You're not eight hours north of New York. 
Yeah, they shut down fucking coal mining in Pennsylvania. Is there any coal mining going on still in Pennsylvania, Skeeter? I thought pretty much every everywhere around here was closed down as far as that. Yeah, I figured. Like I said, all the fucking... There ain't any fucking... There aren't that many cool people that live fucking close to me. Everybody fucking is out of state that I've ever met on either Instagram, even Facebook. The fucking people I click with all live fucking so far away. And it kind of fucking... It kind of sucks. And I'm sure there's probably people here that, that are probably cool and that... I would click with two around here, but I'm not going to find them doing the stuff that I do. I mean, when we, when we ride, we, we don't eat at restaurants that much. Normally it's like, we'll stop at like a subway or we'll catch the fucking guy, you know, in the fast food fucking truck, you know, and we'll grab something on the side of the road. You know, and when we stop, it's normally like these fucking pullovers on the side of the road and boat landings and shit like that because we like to fucking stop and smoke pot, you know. I don't smoke cigarettes, you know. I do vape, obviously, but my buddy likes to, he smokes cigarettes, so he likes to not only stop to smoke pot, but he likes to actually be able to enjoy a couple cigarettes. Because, yes, he smokes while he's going down the road, but if you've ever fucking smoked a cigarette on a motorcycle you don't really enjoy it you're fucking trying to hide it from the wind you know the whole fucking time you only get fucking like three or four fucking drags off it and then you're throwing it because it's already fucking you know down to the filter almost or it's just becoming a pain because now you're coming up into town and now you gotta fucking have both hands and smoke going in your eyes and fucking ashes Hot ashes fucking blowing up into your face fucking sucks so you don't want to fucking just have it in your mouth while you're driving down through town and it's just so we like to pull off fucking where it's fucking quiet not like fucking a whole bunch of people around and smoke we'll smoke cigarette we'll get we'll smoke a couple joints or a joint and then we hop back on a bike and we don't stop again for a couple hours sometimes sometimes longer. Like, um, we, we put, you know, we put five, six hundred fucking miles on in a day before, you know, we normally, when we go for a ride, we, we put at least three to 400 miles on. That's, that's every, anytime we get on the bike. I normally get about 25,000 miles a year on, on my Harley. I pretty much every day that it's nice out, I'm on my bike. Not so much now that I got my dog, because this dog is like, fucking hates to be alone. He's got separation anxiety from dad. To the point where he don't even like to go for a ride with the wife in the car if I'm not going. If I don't go, the fucking dog don't, won't go with the wife. Fucking, I have to fake him out like I'm going and get him in the car and then send her off with him. And then when he comes home, he's fucking, she says he whines and he cries the whole fucking time they're gone. So, it sucks. And I do care and I do have feelings for my dog. So when my dog acts like that, I, I fucking, I feel bad. And I don't end up fucking going. I don't ride nearly as much as I used to because my dog's not good with it. I need to get a sidecar for my fucking shovel head. Uh, I don't want to put it on my electric glide. I'd rather put it on my shovel head and fucking... And then I'll take my dog with me every fucking time I go. Because I don't have a problem taking him. And I know he would ride no problem in a sidecar. Fucking, he will go anywhere that dad goes. He Noises don't bother him. The snowblower doesn't bother him. The lawnmower don't bother him. I used to ride. I ended up getting under lights in a bunch of aftermarket parts. Went to jail, and then someone I called my friend tore it. 
Well, Mr. Fucking, yeah, in uh, not yesterday's live, but the live before that, I went outside and showed the eclipse. And I actually went out to my, what I call my toy box. It's my car trailer. And uh, I've got my three Harleys out there. And I got my buddy's bike fucking out there too. I got four Harleys in my car trailer. And I took and showed kind of a quick fucking thing of the eclipse. But I also showed those three bikes. I showed my 1973 fucking 51 year old fucking shovel head. Fucking is in there. And it fucking, it's beautiful. It's mint. I mean, you wouldn't even know it's 51 years old. It's I've kept it fucking mint. But if you're interested in that video, you can, it's towards the end, but you can go back to that fucking live and you can fast forward through it. You can fast forward to fucking so you can see my bikes. I did a little tour in there. I took the cover off my shovel head. You see my wife's my my wife's got a Holly. She's got my very first I gave her my very first Holly. Fucking a big boy sports stuff. Got 90 horsepower to the rear wheel. My wife has absolutely no problem keeping up with anybody. Look at that face. I love her tattoos. Somebody called it lace, I think. Or something like that. She looks like she's gonna bite, don't she? But she's not. That's just resting bitch face. Look how red her head is though, huh? She's not even fired up right now. Normally she gets fired up. She gets fucking she gets super orange, just red. She's just a pretty girl. She loves her dad. Yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to look into that, Skeeter. I'm going to look into that. Because I, I agree. I think that would be fucking awesome. You know... And it might be just uh, interesting enough that fucking some other people might be into into in, into seeing it too. Yeah, this girl looks so good. We'll turn this other light on too. I think that just washes her out, don't it? Absolutely, but I also think fucking there, there, there's probably more toxic people in the reptile community than cool people. Honestly, fucking, you know, you get a lot of people that get overly opinionated and just because somebody don't keep their snakes the way they keep them, they think that you don't like your animals. And all these people too, the ones that... Oh, they, they got to have fucking, they need sticks and they need all this shit like they do if they were in the wild. Well, these aren't wild fucking snakes. These are captive bred snakes. They don't fucking know what fucking is normal. Normal is whatever fucking, whatever they, however you want to keep them and bring them up. That is normal to them. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that there aren't benefits to fucking, for some snakes to have fucking all that crap that fucking people fucking think that they need. But not all snakes need that. And not all snakes fucking are, need to be and want to be kept like every other fucking snake. You know? And I don't give a fuck how somebody else fucking keeps their snakes. But. I know what I ask when somebody says that they've got issues and normally it's fucking people contact me because they got ball pythons that I eaten. And the fucking, my first fucking thought is, well, how, how do you keep them? You know, and nine times out of 10, they're in fucking some sort of glass, some sort of PVC enclosure that is fucking 10 times bigger than it fucking needs to be for a ball python. 
and they don't have enough fucking clutter because the fucking the snakes fucking literally want to feel like you can't see them. You know, ball pythons are fucking a very fucking they they're like a secretive snake to me. You know, they don't want to be seen. They make as little as possible. You don't know. I hear my boas fucking th thrashing their hides around all the time. My bow, my ball pythons barely make any fucking noise whatsoever because they like to fuck. They're uh, fucking seclusive. Maybe that's not the right word. They like to be by themselves. They like to be in a nice, safe, quiet fucking not feeling like they're out in the open space you know this there are ball pythons that do wonderful that way there are dogs out there that do wonderful with those abusive fucking owners doesn't mean it's right you know but in I, I, everybody can keep their snakes the way they want. It, all you got to do is make sure that all those snakes are fucking doing the normal shit, which is eating, shitting, shedding, full sheds, you know. The temperament should be decent because a fucking, a, an asshole snake, to me, obviously is just telling somebody that fucking they're not happy about something. Because I don't have not one asshole here. You know, so to me, if you've got an asshole that's that that you've had for a while and it hasn't gotten over, you know, its demeanor, because by the time you have it, fucking a couple fucking weeks and you've been handling, all ball pythons settle right in. They fucking calm right down. Ball pythons are one of the fucking fastest, easiest snakes to get used to being handled in in all that they're accepting a lot more right off the bat as opposed to a boa constrictor yes a boa constrictor can be just as docile as a fucking ball python and i in their demeanor and in temperament and all that can be exactly like a ball python but the ball pythons to me seem to take to handling and and relax a lot faster it it don't take nearly as long to get a boa a ball python to relax and be comfortable with you as opposed to a boa constrictor i'm not saying that a boa constrictor is going to be bitey and all that but when you have a boa out in the very beginning it's going to be runny i normally that that it's going to be a hand over hand over hand until you get it to where it trusts you it takes a longer time to get your boa constrictors to trust you than it does your ball, ball pythons. To me, my ball, ball python settled right in within a few days of being here. You know, you know, and my boas, it took longer. You know, it, it did. And when I first had them out, they weren't this, they were moving around a lot faster than this. They get flaily like they're fucking just throwing their body around like if you weren't if i wasn't holding them they were gonna fall like they were just gonna fucking flop on the floor you know it it, it and but like i said they can be just as docile a boa constrictor and can have the same temperament and you can have the same fucking bond that you have with a boa a ball python it to me it just takes a little longer to get to gain the trust with a boa constrictor and like i said it doesn't mean that they're gonna bite you and all that but boas i've had out of the five boas i've had two of them have been hissy when i first got them you know when i first took them out they hissed you know and in my other three this girl never hissed aurora never hissed my img uh roxy has never hissed Raven hissed and Motley hissed. And Roscoe, my boa that I did lose a few years back, Roscoe never hissed. You know, Roscoe had, was my very first boa that I got, and uh, he was so super chill. I, he was like these guys are now when I first got him. These guys I've had for five years, and that's why these guys are the way they are now. You know what I mean? Because I've had them for so long. But Roscoe was, was like the exception 
to the rule. Roscoe came, and Roscoe was a fucking awesome boa from get-go. He was a, just a little guy, but I had him for three years, and he had fucking problem digesting one of his fucking meals, and, I, and he ended up dying. Broke my fucking heart, man. I did. I cried like a little bitch. I did, because... I love my fucking snakes. My snakes mean a lot to me. Like I said, I, I didn't buy any of mine because of what they could give me. I bought mine because I love their looks. That You know what I mean? That's so, you know, and when you buy animals like that, you can't go wrong. You know what I mean? Because I don't care. There's some, some snakes out there that make some amazing babies. But they don't necessarily look that amazing themselves. You know what I mean? They just make amazing fucking stuff. Well, I wasn't into that. I wasn't into what they could, what babies they could amazingly make for me. I was into, I wanted, I wanted stuff when I opened the tub up. I was like, wow, that's fucking awesome. That's mine. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. That's how I bought all my snakes because that wow thing for me. They, they did it for me. It wasn't because of, you know, what they were and, and what they had in them. It was because I liked what they looked like, you know. And in it, with anything, you buy something that you're really into, it, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to stay into it a little longer than if we buy, when we buy stuff that we go, oh, I think I might be into it. And then we find out we're not. Because we didn't really fucking think we was really into it in the beginning then either. But we thought, hey, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> well, with these guys, it was none of that. With these guys, it was, holy fuck, I've got to have that. That's the one I want. i got to have that in my collection. But I'm beyond that point now. I don't need any more. I don't want any more. Look at her tail. See that? She is a gorgeous girl. She's she is probably my the one snake that is uh the the on Instagram she is every she is the most popular snake fight foxy here is the most popular snake on Instagram and believe it or not it's funny because fucking here here, as far as boa wise, Raven seems to be everybody's favorite, and Raven's probably gets the least likes on Instagram, but everybody loves Raven here. You guys want to see Raven, don't you? I have to reach over ahead to grab her. And he is Raven. Mandy, you still here? Mandy's still here. She she yesterday I just put Raven away and she, when she asked wanted to see my you see the purples in her? Can you see the purples in her? Don't you bite me in the face. She has got gorgeous purples in her. She's got good tongue flickers. I still don't want it. I Brian's Boas says that his worst bite he ever got was from a Guyana, so I really fucking am not I don't want this girl to ever bite me. She is a wild caught. I found out after the fact that I paid for her and she was already shipped. I didn't want a wild snake. You see her belly? That's her belly pattern right there. That speckle. Her pattern was a lot more saturated on her sides than it is right now. 
she's actually cleaned up and you see she's actually got some they're not like super peaks on her saddles but she, you see how she's got peaks on her saddles now she had absolutely no peaks when when i first got her when she was a baby and like i said all of this the, all the side pattern here was like super saturated it was like filled right in full of uh freckles and all kinds of shit you know all that was fucking filled right in with freckles and she's actually cleaning up the more the older she gets and the bigger she gets and i didn't realize that when i first got her i actually thought that she was going to be you know she was going to actually stay fucking junky like not not junky I, I don't mean it like that but do her pad had, had so much speckling in it that it took away from a lot of her purples her her purples are really starting to stand out now because that fucking pad inside the medallions are fucking actually cleaned up what girl you really not into it today are you i've been taking her out every day fucking i hadn't been i just started really doing it lately taking her out every day and this girl definitely isn't into wanting to be out every day she's been great and it hasn't been an issue because you see i don't tap train you know i just i watch my snake's body language you know granted if she gave me the if she gave me and looked like she didn't want me to fuck with her i wouldn't i i don't go to the point where i'm gonna i don't want them to feel harassed you know and literally that's how how i think that fucking i actually have such a good relationship with her is because of that i don't push anything with her you know for the most part she's never i've never not taken her out other than probably maybe four three or four times because i've opened her i've opened her tub up and she'll come right up and i can tell she's in food mode she wants to eat it's within a day or two of her fucking supposed to eat or it might even be the day the morning of the night of the day the might be the morning of the day that she's supposed to eat and if she fucking cocks her fucking head up like she's looking for food i leave her alone i i'm i'm not going to purposely fucking put myself in a bad situation and give her a fucking reason to bite me in other words you know what i mean i'm going to try to keep everything i try to be really patient with her you know i i show her off i pretty much let her do what she wants because she's a good girl you know i don't she doesn't ever try to get away from me you know and the longer she's out she just starts moving around and you see she's nice and slow you know some of my other boas fucking move around a lot faster than she does you know but that's also another reason why that that's her body language i'm also talking about you see how slow in everything that she that everything is so slow and all that i fucking i realize that a lot of that's because she really don't want to fucking be out right now and so she's moving around real slow and all that and honestly if if i i probably could fucking get this girl you know put off i could probably put her off by doing something fucking you know too fast or or you know jerky fucking would probably set her off not to the point necessarily that she necessarily bite me but it would make her take note and she'd probably start eyeballing me and shit you know what i mean <laughs> and it's just it it's it is really important being a lot the larger snake snakes you own it's really important for you to be able to read your snakes and nobody's you shouldn't nobody's expecting anybody to know exactly how to read a snake in the beginning you you gain that over time you know you, and and each snake still is going to have a different personality too so it's getting to know each individual snake's personality and then on top of that starting to actually watch and in in 
take in what you're seeing when your snakes are out and you'll you'll stop being able to become a better reader and, and you'll get to the point where you'll know exactly pretty much kind of what your snakes are thinking you know you'll at least be able to tell if they're in a good mood or if they're fucking in like i say with her because you see how slow she's still moving around it's because she's not really impressed that much you know she's safe she feels safe and all that because she is moving around. But this isn't her favorite. I'll give you a shot of her tail, yeah. Oh, I was going to try. There we go. Then we'll go ahead and we'll stick this girl back. It says I'm live. It just came up and said I'm live. I was pretty sure I've been live. Who's all in here now? See how nice and slow she goes back? This, this you do want. You do want them going back nice and slow like this because that just, that right there is a good, that, that's a good indicator that they feel comfortable with you because a snake that doesn't feel comfortable with you, as soon as you go and stick them in their enclosure or a tub, they're going to go whizzing to get away from you because they're, they're not really that comfortable with you. But when you get to a point like this where they go back nice and slow and all that, th that's, this is a good indicator that, you know, that you're getting there. That you're getting to where you should and want to be. She's still got my collar. Here we go. What's happening? Who's in here? So I know who I'm talking to. Is it any of the same people we had in here? Casey, you still in here? I just like to know who I'm talking to, that's all. If it's somebody new, I want to acknowledge. Thank you for showing up. Ah, oh, dude, I'm sorry. You got somebody that fucking staying with you at least while you're laid up? Or are you fucking dealing with this during the day all by yourself while your wife's working? Because I know that feeling too, man. Nobody else wants to say who's here. Were you embarrassed? Were you embarrassed to be here? You don't. You don't want anybody knowing who else is in here. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It fucking sucks if I can be in going through all that and fucking being being alone. Like um. 
I remember. I remember being fucking my back surgery. I thank you, Tiana. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for saying something because now I can talk to you too. And I can call you by name so you know that I'm talking to you. <laughs> you know? Oh, who you, who you want to see, Tiana? We aim to please. But we still got somebody else in here that doesn't want to talk. Obviously, thank you, Tiana, for making me so I know that you're not embarrassed to fucking be here. Oh, I'll try to keep the F-bomb down. Sorry. Hello to your kids. Hello, Tiana's kids. I'm the man on TV. <laughs> Oh, now it's just the two of us. That third person was embarrassed, see? Told you. I don't know why they're embarrassed for. Nobody knows that they're here. Other than they're, they, we see that they're on the counter. I know, I, I hope I didn't piss somebody off the other day. Because I noticed Danielle didn't come back. Sometimes my mouth fucking gets me in trouble, I guess. They're doing great. I fucking actually get... Oh, sorry about the F word. I'm getting ready to go and... Uh, hi. Hi, kids. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. But no, they're doing great, actually. I'm actually thinking about going and taking Cali... And putting him in a 32 quart single tub up on top of there so I can move Brandy into the CB70 tub. Because it's way bigger. Cali doesn't need that size tub. He could live the rest of his life out in a 32 quart, no problem. And, and be totally happy. Brandy's been in that 32 quart since she's been here. And she's been pounding food. She's ate four fucking meals for me. Sorry about the F-bomb. And uh, she's eaten four meals for me, and she's only been here a month. Or three, yeah, she's had like three meals, I guess. And she's only been here a month. And they would try and tell me, oh, she eats once, once a month to every two months. And she's had three meals for me. So, you know, she's doing way better in that tub than obviously she was doing in that 60-gallon tank that she had been in her whole life. So... You know, it's definitely worked out best by getting her in that tub. But I'd rather put her in that 70-quart tub. You know what I mean? It's better for a female. Especially, she's also, she's uh 15 years old. I think she's 15 years old, something like that. 16 years old. How's it going this morning, this afternoon? Who do you guys want to say? Hi, whoever, one of you guys that just popped in, who do you want to see? And I'll pull them out. If you've been here before, you, you know who I got. And if you don't know who I got, just throw something out there and I, I might have it. So, you guys just joined. I'll go pull something out that you guys want to see. Snakes. Just in case we get a, we got a comedian out there. I'm talking about pulling snakes out. So, if you two that just popped in want to see a snake, my wife wants to see a BCI. I don't have no BCIs. Well, yes, I do. I do. Well, actually, fucking, I, I've got a couple of them. Because IMGs are actually a BCI. They're a hypo BCI. And uh, Roar, uh, Raven, Roxy... This girl is is what they call locality. This girl's a locality boa. This is Roxy. She's a Doom Rolls boa, a ground dwelling boa. And the first thing you'll notice about Doom Rolls boas is their bodies are not like your normal boa. 
Your normal boas have like a bread bread loaf looking body. You know what I mean. You know what I mean? Have that loaf shaped body. Well she these Dumeril's boas are more have bodies more like your ball pythons. They're more rounder, all that. They're a ground dwelling boa. Really spotty. Hey, thank you, Katie. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or this morning, rather. I have not seen you here before. Appreciate you fucking joining us. Sorry about the f bomb. I have I have a bad mouth. I don't. I mean well. As bad as my mouth is, my animals love me. But I I try not to. I try to keep it low keyed. When I get excited, I I throw the f bomb out a lot. But this is my Doom Rose Boa. This is Roxy. And uh, she is a 2018 girl. She was born in 2018. I've had her for four years. A little over four years. Be five years this summer. And, and geez, what? About three months. About three months I've had her f four years. Five years. I've had her five years in... in like three months. Oh, Katie is your wife? How, how are you doing, Casey's wife? Very nice to meet you. It's too bad your fucking old man's in so much pain. I'm not going to worry about my mouth now. <laughs> uh, she's watching from the kitchen. <laughs> she's making me a sandwich. <laughs> Ah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Casey, for allowing your wife to fucking hang out with us. <laughs> uh, fucking Casey just, Casey just felt bad for me and says, oh, we got to get someone on here, uh, somebody else in here. He's only got three people in here. <laughs> Casey trying to help me out. Yeah, but she's a good sized girl. When it gets a little warmer, I'm gonna put her I'll put her in the hallway and let her fucking crawl up against the side of the wall and let her stretch out and then I'll be able to get a measurement on her. That's how a lot of people do. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. I appreciate anybody that watches. Cause I say it all the time. I, you know, I I probably wouldn't watch me. I'll be real. I probably and that's probably not probably it's fucking something I probably ought to tell everybody. But honestly, I probably wouldn't watch myself. <laughs> Casey. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, some of us are lucky and have good women. I got one. Oh, speaking of woman, she's home now. All right, well, I guess. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, but I guess we're going to be, we're going to go off. I'm going to go off now. I might, I might come back this afternoon sometime i don't know but because i got clones i gotta fucking i gotta transplant some clones so we're gonna uh, i might come back after after i get that done so maybe i'll come back so you got somebody to hang out with casey while you're fucking laid up so but i, I might be back but if i don't don't hold me to it All right, buddy. We'll see you guys in a few. All right. Peace. All right, Dale.